welcome to one and all to the International Women's Day series by Annapurna Dance Company. I'm Ranjita Justin. I'm a Mohini Atam dance artist, a public speaker, and a corporate professional. I'm really happy to be hosting this episode where we will be celebrating a distinguished guest and listening more about her achievements and her journey. International Women's Day is an opportunity to celebrate women and their achievements. But it goes a bit more than just being about self-empowerment because these women have self-empowered and relied on their own strengths to make it in their chosen pathway. I'm extremely excited to be interviewing our guest, Linda Shanson, who is also known as Linda Shanowich to some. She's a singer, dancer, narrator, composer, producer, and wears many hats in the creative world. She is the co-founder of Baluji Music Foundation and is the manager for Inner Vision Orchestra. Linda, I'm absolutely thrilled to have you and on this episode, and I'm so excited to hear more from you about your journey. Namaste. Namaste. You have such a vibrant background, and I've been reading so much about your projects. But before we get into that, it'll be good to understand your journey. And if you could briefly tell us how you got introduced into the world of arts. I was born into a family that was passionate about music. So from the very beginning, I was surrounded by music. My mother was an opera singer and my father was an amateur violinist. And they had many musical friends and my cot used to be under the piano. So I was a little sponge and I absorbed a lot of that music. And along with music came dance, because as in Indian culture, the word Sangeet means both music and dance. That is actually true for some people, that the love of music inspires movement in the body. And I loved stories as a little girl. I'd put on lots of different voices and be lots of different characters and write different stories. So all this came together. And that is how I naturally was an artist. That's really nice to hear. You have been part of many projects, but one project that really stood out for me was uh, an interview that I heard on BBC. Um, for anyone who's interested can watch it on YouTube. Is a project about blind women's voices. Could you tell us, uh, as a producer, uh, what that project was all about and what was your experience? In the Inner Vision Orchestra, which is the UK's only professional blind orchestra, we have many very talented women, all with terrific stories to tell. And I wanted to focus a performance on them specifically. And so I brought them together. We had Kate Portal, who's a violinist, a storyteller herself, and an accordionist. We had Abby Baker, who plays violin and piano and clarinet. We had a young girl, very exceptionally talented, called Jessie Bannister. We had Chrissy Cochran, a transgender woman. We had Florrie from Scotland, and we had Pareshte Khusro Jerdi, who is an Iranian singer. And we also had Maria Oshodi, who is the founder of Extant, the professional blind theatre company. So we had this great group of women, and not only were they performing their music, but they were also telling their stories. And that made me very happy to focus on them because they deserve that attention. And it was just before lockdown. 
So we would have had more women. Some of them were a bit apprehensive, but um, we did. It was a very special atmosphere because we we could feel that we were on the verge of something dramatic, and that added a kind of extra gravitas to that uh, performance because nothing was going to stop us. And so we had a great evening. Indeed, I mean, uh, you know the. Iranian vocalist that you mentioned about, I mean, she spoke about how during her childhood she was not even allowed to sing. So such profound stories, but translated very positively into her singing. It was just outstanding to listen to her sing also. Uh, you touched upon Innovision Orchestra, which is um, actually brings me into the next question because you are the manager of uh, this particular orchestra which is an all blind musicians orchestra so could you tell us um, how you overcome challenges as you're managing it um, and also anything that that you have learned as part of being along the journey of traveling and touring along with all blind musicians? Well, the musicians in Innovision Orchestra are all amazing people. Apart from their music, their spirit, very inspiring because of course, if you can't see, there are so many practical problems you have to overcome before you even get to the point of being able to make a performance. And they are so driven by their love of their art and the importance that it is in their lives that nothing will stop them if you give them the opportunity to show themselves. And unfortunately, they don't get that opportunity. If you look at all the performances that are going on any day in the UK, there are festivals, all kinds of wonderful musical events. You can count on half a hand, if at all, how many blind musicians are involved in those musical events. And ask yourself why. And that is why we have formed the Innovision Orchestra to say, here, here are these wonderful people, give them a chance. So it's a showcase. And it's been a great learning experience for me because um, when we did our first national tour and we wrote a research report on that national tour, things that we all had to learn, like how to communicate your requirements to the venue that you're performing in, how to talk to the sound engineer, what language to use. How to... Orchestra was founded by Banerjee Srivastava, who is himself blind. And he has found a way of conducting the orchestra and relying on listening and the confidence to work together to build that confidence so that they can deliver very complex pieces of music without any intervention by a sighted person. That is amazing to learn. I mean, I have to also say that I that was probably the first time I met you as mm. a part of the dance group because I yeah. also wanted to bring the visual part of the, uh, the orchestra through yeah. So, which was amazing. Yeah. Uh, it all came together, I think, yes. at South Bank Centre. So it was just fantastic mm. uh, you put that together on stage for the audience. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> just sort of... I'm still recovering from that. I'm still recovering from that <laughs> project. <laughs> it, it, was in, uh, it was a phenomenal experience uh, to be part of a project that is so unique um, mm. yet where on that evening no one would have guessed that they were blind musicians unless and not only and I would like to say this um, in the recording not only is the orchestra full of blind people but they come from very different language and cultural and religious 
backgrounds and over time they have learnt to understand and accommodate those different attitudes, taboos, attitudes towards guide dogs, attitudes towards maybe some of the personal problems that people bring because they've all had traumatic experiences in their lives. But that is a wonderful thing, really, really wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Coming back to you, Linda, we all know that you're a multi-talented artist. You paint, you sing, you dance, and you write. I was really impressed uh, with your stories uh, in the journey with the gods, which is basically mythological children's stories. So what was the inspiration behind it? When I was studying Bharatanatyam in Sri Lanka, I went to the market and there was a picture of Hanuman in the market and I bought that picture and it made me laugh so much and I went back to where I was staying and I was singing I'm Hanuman, king of the monkeys, yes I can do what I will and the song just came to me and I have a lot of songs like that and I didn't think more about it. And then when I had my son, I thought I'd like to make something for children to enjoy about these wonderful stories and the characters from Indian mythology because I've been studying Indian music and dance and that is part of that understanding. And I wrote a series of songs, one for Krishna, one for Shiva, one for Lakshmi, one for Garuda, one for Kamadeva, one for Saraswati, one for Kali. And a friend of ours who's a musician knew some publishers, they were, they're called mantra publishers, and they suggested that I write a book to go with the songs. So that's how that project developed. And I thought, well, it has to be about children based here, living here, who have some statues and images in their room. On a magical night of the blue moon, they come to life and they interact with the children and they go on a journey with the gods. That is really nice because when I was reading the stories, they were so easy to understand and the songs just lend a very musical and soothing element to it. So just so you know, Annapurna Dance has a personal favorite, that they, a song that they use for most of their music sharing uh, as part of their uh, dance uh, programs. So this is the song that you wrote on Lord Ganesha. And uh, as a surprise element, so Shanta Ma'am asked me to uh, choreograph it and perform it in Mohiniyatam dance style. So I was very excited when she turned to me to do this. And uh, so here is a short presentation on your song about Lord Ganesha. <laughs>
hope you enjoyed that. Thank you. That was brilliant. Well, now that we've heard your song, I think it would only be sensible for me to ask you, can you also sing a beautiful song for us? Because there have been quite a few songs that I did listen on your website. It would be good if you could share just a little, you know, two for the audience. It will be really good. Do you want me to sing one of my songs? Yes. Okay. I am a note tuned with each inflection, my poor heart stretched in all directions each time you go away what a melancholy tune i play i am strong and do not look for imperfections but my heart is bent on deep reflections each love that comes to pass into my net I cast. Do not count my mistakes, they happen many, but so sweet. I'm glad it's been that way. Tomorrow may bring more delightful dangers to endure. Delightful dangers to endure. Beautiful. Your voice is so soulful. Right. Yeah, it's like you're singing from the heart and very beautiful voice and a lovely song. We've obviously touched upon your projects, but what will be interesting is to also understand about your learning curve. Uh, I understand that you've learned both Kathak and Bharatanatyam. So it would be good to uh, sort of understand from you, how did you go about uh, learning? Because obviously you went to Sri Lanka to learn Bharatanatyam, but also you traveled back to India to learn Kathak. What were the, what were the contrast and what were the similarities you saw? And uh, do you have a personal favorite between the two? <laughs> For me, when I was learning Bharatanatyam, it was like a great fire was burning all the rubbish that's inside, you know. I, because, of course, it's a very physical dance. It's a very athletic dance. And it requires a lot of stamina and precision. And I felt very much that this is the dance inspired by Lord Shiva. It's kind of fiery you know? <laughs> and um, expressive and wonderful and sculptural. And then when I met Baluji, who's from North India, he introduced me to Katak from North India. And when I studied it, at first the Katak teacher said, oh, you'll, you'll mess it up with the movements from Bharat Natyam. But I just thought, well, a dancer is supposed to be able to control their movements. It can't be that difficult. And I haven't been studying it for so long that it's so deeply ingrained that I can't take on another style. And also music have different styles. So. I love Katak because it's got a fluidity in it. And instead of the sculptural figures that you make with Bharatanatyam, it sculpts the space around the movement. 
and it's more romantic in essence. There is this feeling and you have this look in your eyes that it's Lord Krishna, you know, your love for, if, it's, if you don't love Krishna, then your love for whatever it is, you have that in your expression. And, uh, and of course, the very fast footwork with the Gungus is, is absolutely lovely. You have that in Bharatanatyam too, but it, it becomes even more intricate in Katak and this link with the tabla. And I studied tabla as well. So tabla is like the backbone of the vocal music and of the dance. So it, it's, it all comes together. It's lovely. That's really nice. Um, well, in my final question to you, it's International Women's Day today. Is there any message you would like to share? That every day should be Women's Day. And don't let anybody undermine you and take away your confidence. Believe in yourself and believe in your dreams and believe in your beauty your lovely nature and caring and being kind is not a weakness, it's your strength. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today. And I hope that the lovely audience have had a flavor, which is only a drop in the big ocean of work that you have done for the society and for all of us in the world of art. I would like to thank Annapurna Dance Company for giving me this opportunity to interview you, Linda. And I would also like to thank Annapurna Dance Company, which is a wonderful organization, and you for your lovely questions and interview. Namaste. Namaste. But before we go, I'd like to leave you all with a quote. This is by Michelle Obama. There is no limit to what we, as women, can accomplish. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you.